Chapter 1 O.M. Salutation to the Triple Treasure Salutation to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas Here is carefully written down the Lankavatara Sutra in which the Lord of the Dharma discourses on the egolessness of all things. Thus have I heard. The Blessed One once stayed in the castle of Lanka which is situated on the peak of Mount Malaya on the Great Ocean, and which is adorned with flowers made of jewels of various kinds. He was with a large assembly of bhikshus and with a great multitude of bodhisattvas, who had come together from various Buddha lands. The bodhisattva mahasattvas, headed by the bodhisattva Mahamedi, were all perfect masters of the various samadhis, the tenfold self-mastery, the ten powers, and the six psychic faculties. They were anointed by the hands of all the Buddhas. They all well understood the significance of the objective world as the manifestation of their own mind. They knew how to maintain various forms, teachings, and disciplinary measures, according to the various mentalities and behaviors of beings. They were thoroughly versed in the five dharmas, the three svabhavas, the eight vijnanas, and the twofold non-atman. At that time, the Blessed One who had been preaching in the palace of the King of Sea Serpents came out at the expiration of seven days and was greeted by an innumerable host of Nagakanyas including Sakra and Brahma. And looking at Lanka on Mount Malaya smiled and said, By the Tathagatas of the past, who were Arhats and fully enlightened ones, this truth was made the subject of their discourse, at that castle of Lanka on the mountain peak of Malaya. The truth realizable by noble wisdom in one's inmost self, which is beyond the reasoning knowledge of the philosophers as well as the state of consciousness of the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas. I, too, would now for the sake of Ravana, overlord of the Akshas, discourse on this truth. Inspired by the spiritual power of the Tathagata, Ravana, lord of the Rakshasas, heard his voice. Indeed, the Blessed One, surrounded and accompanied by an innumerable host of Nagakanyas including Sakra and Brahma, came out of the palace of the king of sea serpents. And looking at the waves of the ocean and also at the mental agitations going on in those assembled, he thought of the ocean of the Alayabhanana where the evolving Vijnanas like the waves are stirred by the wind of objectivity. While he was standing there thus absorbed in contemplation, Ravana saw him and uttered a joyous cry, saying, I will go and request of the Blessed One to enter into Lanka. For this long night he would probably profit, do good, and gladden the gods as well as human beings. Thereupon, Ravana, Lord of the Rakshasas, with his attendants, riding in his floral celestial chariot, came up where the Blessed One was, and having arrived there he and his attendants came out of the chariot, walking around the Blessed One three times from left to right. They played on a musical instrument, beating it with a stick of blue indra, and hanging the lute at one side, which was inlaid with the choicest lapis lazuli and supported by a ribbon of priceless cloth. Yellowish white like Priyangu, they sang with various notes such as Saharshya, Rishabha, Gandhara, Divata, Nisheta, Madhyama, and Kaisika, which were melodiously modulated in Grama, Merchana, etc. The voice in accompaniment with the flute beautifully blended with the measure of the gatha. The truth treasure whose principle is the self-nature of mind, has no selfhood, stands above all reasoning, and is free from impurities. It points to the knowledge attained in one's inmost self. Lord, show me here the way leading to the truth. The Shugata is the body in whom are stored immaculate virtues. In him are manifested bodies transforming and transformed. He enjoys the truth realized in his inmost self. May he visit Lanka. Now is the time, Muni. This Lanka was inhabited by the Buddhas of the past, and they were accompanied by their sons who were owners of many forms. Lord, show me now the highest truth, and the Yakshas who are endowed with many forms will listen. Thereupon, Ravana, the Lord of Lanka, further adapting the Totaka rhythm sang this in the measure of the Gatha. After seven nights, the Blessed One leaving the ocean which is the abode of the Makara, the palace of the Sea King, now stands on the shore. Just as the Buddha rises, Ravana, 
accompanied by the Apsaras and Yakshas numerous, by Sukha, Sarana, and learned men. Miraculously goes over to the place where the Lord is standing. Alighting from the floral vehicle, he greets the Tathagata reverentially, makes him offerings, tells him who he is, and stands by the Lord. I who have come here, am called Ravana, the ten-headed king of the Rakshasas, mayest thou graciously receive me with Lanka and all its residents. In this city, the inmost state of consciousness realized, indeed, by the enlightened ones of the past was disclosed on this peak studded with precious stones. Let the Blessed One, too. Surrounded by sons of the Victorious One, now disclose the truth immaculate on this peak embellished with precious stones. We, together with the residents of Lanka, desire to listen. The Lankavatara Sutra which is praised by the Buddhas of the past discloses the inmost state of consciousness realized by them, which is not founded on any system of doctrine. I recollect the Buddhas of the past surrounded by sons of the Victorious One recite the Sutra. The Blessed One, too, will speak. In the time to come, there will be Buddhas and Buddha sons pitying the Yakshas. The leaders will discourse on this magnificent doctrine on the peak adorned with precious stones. This magnificent city of Lanka is adorned with varieties of precious stones, surrounded by peaks, refreshing and beautiful and canopied by a net of jewels. Blessed one, here are the Yakshas who are free from faults of greed, reflecting on the truth realized in one's inmost self and making offerings to the Buddhas of the past. They are believers in the teaching of the Mahayana and intent on disciplining one another. There are younger Yakshas, girls, and boys, desiring to know the Mahayana. Come, blessed one, who art our teacher, come to Lanka on Mount Malaya. The Rakshasas, with Kumhakarna at their head, who are residing in the city, wish, as they are devoted to the Mahayana, to hear about this inmost realization. They have made offerings assiduously to the Buddhas in the past and are today going to do the same. Come, for compassion's sake, to the Lanka together with thy sons. Mahamati, accept my mansion, the company of the Apsaras, necklaces of various sorts, and the delightful Azoka garden. I give myself up to serve the Buddhas and their sons. There is nothing with me that I do not give up for their sake. Great Muni, have compassion on me. Hearing him speak thus, the Lord of the Triple World said, King of Yakshas, this mountain of precious stones was visited by the leaders in the past. And, taking pity on you, they discoursed on the truth revealed in their inmost consciousness. The Buddhas of the future time will proclaim the same on this jewel-adorned mountain. This inmost truth is the abode of those yogins who stand in the presence of the truth. King of the Yakshas, you have the compassion of the Shugatas and myself. The blessed one accepting the request of the king remained silent and undisturbed. He now mounted the floral chariot offered by Ravana. Thus Ravana and others, wise sons of the victorious one, honored by the Apsaras singing and dancing, reached the city. Arriving in the delightful city the Buddha was again the recipient of honors. He was honored by the group of Yakshas including Ravana and by the Yaksha women. A net of jewels was offered to the Buddha by the younger Yakshas. Girls and boys, and necklaces beautifully ornamented with jewels were placed by Ravana about the neck of the Buddha and those of the sons of the Buddha. The Buddhas together with the sons of the Buddha and the wise men, accepting the offerings, discoursed on the truth which is the state of consciousness realized in the inmost self. Honoring him as the best speaker, Ravana and the company of the Yakshas honored Mahamati and requested of him again and again. Thou art the asker of the Buddha concerning the state of consciousness realized in their inmost selves, of which we hear, Yakshas as well as the sons of the Buddha, are desirous of hearing. I, together with the Yakshas, the sons of the Buddha, and the wise men, request this of thee. Thou art the most eloquent of speakers, and the most strenuous of the yogins. With faith I beg of thee. Ask the Buddha about the doctrine, O thou the proficient one. Free from the faults of the philosophers and Pratyekabuddhas and Sravakas is the truth of the inmost consciousness, immaculate and culminating in the stage of Buddhahood. 
Thereupon the Blessed One created jewel-adorned mountains and other objects magnificently embellished with jewels in an immense number. On the summit of each mountain the Buddha himself was visible, and Ravana, the Yaksha, also was found standing there. Thus the entire assembly was seen on each mountain peak, and all the countries were there, and in each there was a leader. Here also was the king of the Rakshasas and the residents of Lanka, and the Lanka created by the Buddha rivaling the real one. Other things were there, too. The Azoka with its shining woods, and on each mountain peak Mahamadi was making a request of the Buddha, who discoursed for the sake of the Yakshas on the truth leading to the inmost realization. On the mountain peak he delivered a complete sutra with an exquisite voice varied in hundreds of thousands of ways. After this the teacher and the sons of the Buddha vanished away in the air, leaving Ravana the Yaksha himself standing above in his mansion. Thought he, how is this? What means this? And by whom was it heard? What was it that was seen? And by whom was it seen? Where is the city? And where is the Buddha? Where are those countries, those jewel-shining Buddhas, those Shugitas? Is it a dream then? Or a vision? Or is it a castle conjured up by the Gandharvs? Or is it dust in the eye, or a Fata Morgana, or the dream child of a barren woman, or the smoke of a fire wheel, that which I saw here? Then Ravana reflected. This is the nature as it is of all things, which belongs to the realm of mind, and it is not comprehended by the ignorant as they are confused by every form of imagination. There is neither the seer nor the seen, neither the speaker nor the spoken. The form and usage of the Buddha and his Dharma. They are nothing but discrimination. Those who see things such as were seen before, do not see the Buddha. Even when discrimination is not aroused, one does not see the Buddha. The Buddha being fully enlightened is seen where the world itself is not evolved. The Lord of Lanka was then immediately awakened from his reflection, feeling a revulsion in his mind and realizing that the world was nothing but his own mind. He was settled in the realm of non-discrimination. Was urged by the stock of his past good deeds. Acquired the cleverness of understanding all the texts, obtained the faculty of seeing things as they are, was no more dependent upon others, observed things excellently with his own. Wisdom. Gained the insight that was not of discursive reasoning was no more dependent upon others. Became a great yogin of the discipline. Was able to manifest himself in all excellent forms. Got thoroughly acquainted with all skillful means. Had the knowledge of the characteristic aspects of every stage. By which he would surmount it skillfully. Was delighted to look into the self-nature of Siddha. Manas. Manovijanana. Got a view whereby he could cut himself loose from the triple continuation. Had the knowledge of disposing of every argument of the philosophers on causation. Thoroughly understood the Tathagatagarbha, the stage of Buddhahood, the inmost self, found himself abiding in the Buddha knowledge. When suddenly a voice was heard from the sky, saying, It is to be known by oneself. Tiang has. He who sees in the way as was seen before, cannot see the Buddha. When no discrimination is aroused, this, indeed, is the seeing. According to Wei, if he sees things and takes them for realities, he does not see the Buddha. Even when he is not abiding in a discriminating mind, he cannot see the Buddha. Not seeing anything doing in the world. This is said to be seeing the Buddha. If a man is able thus to see things, he is the one who sees the Tathagata. When the wise observe all experiences in this manner, they are transformed assuming an exquisite body. This is the enlightenment attained by the Buddha. Well done, well done, Lord of Lanka. Well done, indeed, Lord of Lanka, for once more. The yogin is to discipline himself as thou doest. The Tathagatas and all things are to be viewed as they are viewed by thee. Otherwise viewed, it is nihilism. All things are to be comprehended by transcending the Siddha, Manas, and Vijnana as is done by thee. Thou shouldst look inwardly and not become attached to the letter and a superficial view of things. 
thou shouldst not fall into the attainments, conceptions, experiences, views, and samadhis of the sravakas, pratyekabuddhas, and philosophers. Thou shouldst not have any liking for small talk and witticism. Thou shouldst not cherish the notion of self-substance, nor have any thought for the vainglory of rulership, nor dwell on such dhyanas as belong to the six dhyanas, etc. Lord of Lanka, this is the realization of the great yogins. To destroy the discourses advanced by others. To crush mischievous views in pieces, to keep themselves properly away from ego-centered notions, to cause a revulsion in the depths of the mind fittingly by means of an exquisite knowledge. Such are sons of the Buddha who walk in the way of the Mahayana. In order to enter upon the stage of self-realization as attained by the Tathagatas, the discipline is to be pursued by the Wei and Tiang. Do not hold the views maintained in the Vedas. Lord of Lanka, conducting thyself in this manner, let thee be further purified in the way thou hast attained. By disciplining thyself well in Samadhi and Samapati. Follow not the state realized and enjoyed by the Sravakas, Pratyekabuddhas, and philosophers, which rises from the imagination of those who discipline themselves according to the practices of the puerile philosophers. They cling to the individual forms of the world created by their egotistical ideas. They maintain such notions as element, quality, and substance. They cling tenaciously to views originating from ignorance. They become confused by cherishing the idea of birth where prevails emptiness. They cling to discrimination as real. They fall into the way of thinking where obtains the dualism of qualifying and qualified. Lord of Lanka, this is what leads to various excellent attainments, this is what makes one grow aware of the inmost attainment, this is the Mahayana realization. This will result in the acquirement of an excellent condition of existence. Lord of Lanka. By entering upon the Mahayana discipline the veils of ignorance are destroyed. And one turns away from the multitudinous waves of the Vijnana and falls not into the refuge and practice of the philosophers. Lord of Lanka, the philosophers' practice starts from their own egotistic attachments. Their ugly practice arises from adhering to dualistic views concerning the self-nature of the Vijnana. Well done, Lord of Lanka. Reflect on the signification of this as you did when seeing the Tathagata before. For this, indeed, is seeing the Tathagata. At that time it occurred to Ravana. I wish to see the Blessed One again. Who has all the disciplinary practices at his command? Who has turned away from the practices of the philosophers? Who is born of the state of realization in the inmost consciousness, and who is beyond the dualism of the transformed and the transforming? He is the knowledge realized by the yogins. He is the realization attained by those who enjoy the perfect bliss of the samadhi which they gain by coming to an intuitive understanding through meditation. May I see thus again the compassionate one by means of his miraculous powers in whom the fuel of passion and discrimination is destroyed. Who is surrounded by sons of the Buddha, who has penetrated into the minds and thoughts of all beings, who moves about everywhere, who knows everything, who keeps himself away from work and form. Seeing him may I attain what I have not yet attained. Retain what I have already gained. May I conduct myself with non-discrimination, abide in the joy of samadhi and samapati, and attain the ground where the Tathagatas walk, and in these make progress. At that moment, the Blessed One recognizing that the Lord of Lanka is to attain the Anutpatakat Harmakshanti showed his glorious compassion for the Ten-Headed One by making himself visible once more on the mountain peak studded with many jewels and enveloped in a network of jewels. The Ten-Headed King of Lanka saw the splendor again as seen before on the mountain peak. He saw the Tathagata, who was the Arhat and the fully enlightened one, with the thirty-two marks of excellence beautifully adorning his person and also saw himself on each mountain peak, together with Mahamedi, in front of the Tathagata, the fully enlightened one, putting forward his discourse on the realization experienced by the Tathagata in his inmost self, and, surrounded by the Akshas, conversing on the verbal teachings and stories of the Buddha. Those Buddha lands were seen with the leaders. There is surely a discrepancy here in the text. 
Tiang reads. In all the Buddha lands in the ten quarters were also seen such events going on, and there was no difference whatever. Wei is quite different and has the following. Besides, he saw all the Buddha lands and all the kings thinking of the transitoriness of the body. As they are covetously attached to their thrones, wives, children, and relatives, they find themselves bound by the five passions and have no time for 